Michigan Replay with Bo Schembechler and Jim Brandstatter. Brought to you by the General Motors Corporation. After the opener against Notre Dame, that if Michigan won, they'd be back. Well, after their second game against <laughs> South Carolina, a 34-3 victory, you must have come all the way back. No. You may be in the front row by now. <laughs> no, but that was a uh, very pleasing victory, uh, Jim. Um, tough circumstances to play under down yeah. there, uh, but uh, I thought our team played real well. And you were really excited about it. I mean, I... Well, sure, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you win big like that, it's exciting. To show you how excited Bo Schembechler was, only on Michigan Replay <laughs> will you be able to see this. this. Into the locker room. This will be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Into the locker I, I room. I guarantee you. Listening to Coach Schembechler talking to the troops. Every single guy here is so highly important to what we're doing. I don't want anybody jeopardized. Other teams are having problems. That's the reason that we can beat them. We don't want any. Everybody take care of himself. He lives clean. He comes to play every day in practice to get better and better. Believe in one another. Bam. We got some guys hurt. Other guys came off the bench, went into the job. That's the way it's got to be. Everybody working together. We got the greatest leadership I've ever had. And I want the next nine games to prove that. that this is the greatest leadership I've ever had. Right? I'd call that an excited head coach, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, you could hardly talk. <laughs> <laughs> you really did, and the kids responded big in a, in, a, in a tough situation, on the road, hostile environment. Well, we were playing in, um, in a stadium that is very noisy, uh, playing in a climate we're not accustomed to. Uh, I won't say anything about the officials, Jim. They, <laughs> I'll get they, to that later. They were down there, too. <laughs> but, uh, you know, taking everything into consideration, we played uh, real well and won the game. Well, we'll get to the officiating a little later. In the meantime, we've got some highlights to take a look at. Be sure to be with us next segment because we've got the first half, Michigan and South Carolina coming at you. If Jimmy's got time to throw the ball, he's going to find the open receiver because I feel that we've got a good enough passing attack to where we can defeat most defensive backs in anywhere. Great coordination with Coach Moeller, calling great defenses and stuff. Everybody worked hard all week, ran hard, tried our hardest out. We just shut them down. We worked on that very, shut them down. The Michigan-South Carolina game was supposed to be a real tough one. Uh, defenses and offenses, South Carolina coming off a 10-2 and two season, two victories before they played you, you coming off Notre Dame. And it turned out not to be that kind of a game. You dominated. Well, we, um, we did a good job in that regard, Jim. I don't know whether we dominated until late in the game, but... Uh, at least we were in control. At least we led throughout, let's yeah. put it that way. But early, the offense, and it looked like what you were talking about against Notre Dame, you were right. able to block them. Right. This is our second possession, really. Um, Jim back to throw here and uh, hits a pass to uh, Jamie Morris. Um, we, we moved the ball pretty well uh, each time we had it, really. But um, we had some penalties and other things that got to stop. This is a draw play. And, Jamie Morris comes out for a good yardie. They were smaller, and your big guy seemed to blow them off the ball pretty as, well. As the game went along. This is a third and two, and they came after us with a heavy blitz. Jamie got a great block there, and he put the ball up to Paul Jokic for a big 41-yard uh, uh, play that really uh, got us down into scoring position. Here on a third down and seven, uh, Jim throws over the middle on a key pass that got us the first down. Um, that was a key play, Jim, because uh, we could have gotten stopped there and had to settle for the field goal. And on the goal line, you go to the option. You went to the option, and uh, they came upfield, took the pitch away, and Jim uh, ducked underneath and went in for the score. So we lead 7 nothing. At that point, you had to feel awfully good because the defense still playing strong. The defense was playing well. As a matter of fact, at that particular point, I'm not sure they had a first down yet. Here's a third and nine, and they scramble. This guy's the uh, cleverest little guy you ever saw <laughs> scrambling. Completes this pass. And it uh, took a half an hour to run the play, and they lost six yards. Well, the thing again, though, is look at how many people you have around the ball. And I think that shows the kind of pursuit the defense was Well, we, ho we hope to have that, Jim. Um, I thought in some cases we could have tackled this guy a little better. Maybe he was just that good. I don't know. Uh, when we got the ball at midfield again, we went on a bootleg pass and hit Jokic again for a big play. And Jokic um, had a big day against South Carolina. Well, he caught some big passes, and for the first time, 
he got over 100 yards in uh, receptions. This is Thomas Wilshire running hard here. They face mask him, as you can see, as his head jerked back. Uh, but um, Thomas ran well and really helped us. Came back with the option play again. This time, Jim pitched to Jamie Morris, who went in. His shoe went in ahead of him. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he went in to score without, uh, without a shoe. And if there was anything disappointing maybe about this game on Saturday, it had to be that the fact the defense let the team back just before half. Well, we've done that uh, two weeks in a row. Um, they had the ball with a couple minutes left at the 20 and uh, drove down, uh, had a couple of running plays that were good. Uh, he scrambled around here and hit this pass on the right sideline at about the 18-yard line, and uh, they moved dangerously close to a touchdown. But again, the defense uh, just, they bend, but they right, don't break. Right, and they finally uh, put the stopper out of here. Here's 25 seconds left. They run a real good option play here and get down in uh, fairly close uh, to the 10-yard line. Uh, we stiffen later on and then force them into a field goal. Here's the third down and one. Uh, complete a pass over the middle to the five-yard line, and now it looks like they might get a touchdown, but we stopped them on the next couple of plays, forced them to the field goal, and they kicked it, so we went in at halftime ahead 14-3. to three. At that point, I think you probably had to feel pretty confident about the way things are going, because from the press box, watching the game, looked like you were in control, and, uh, and maybe that drive they put at the end was one of those things where the defense, again, playing pass and they got hit well, by a run. Well, like Notre Dame did the week before. It's one of those things uh, we'd like not to do that <laughs> <laughs> quite so often, especially in a real tight game. But, uh, yes, we felt good at halftime and uh, felt we could make adjustments and continue to move the ball. A little bit disappointed that we blew some opportunities, settled for some field goals, fumbled inside the 10. We can't do too much of that if we're going to win. Well, you had to feel awfully good later on because Michigan went after him in the second half in a big way. We'll be back with those highlights right after we pause for these words. I think I got pretty lucky. I don't know. They, they double teamed me and I just looped around pretty deep and I just came over there and the ball was right there. So I just tipped it and then caught it. It wasn't that, that uh, stylish or anything, but I, I got the job done. We just kept leaning on them and leaning on them and leaning on them and they finally broke and they just kind of caved in at the end because they were just out of gas and you're talking about 270 pound guys coming out on 240 pound guys all afternoon and it gets old after a while. The Wolverines leading 14 three and a half but starting the third quarter after South Carolina had driven gotten a field goal at the end of the first half they get the ball back right. and I think the key to the game the defense just stood right up and stuffed them opening up that Shut second half. down and that, that was very key uh, because uh, they probably thought they were going to move the ball some, and and uh, they weren't able to do it. Here they fumbled and were fortunate to get it back. Um, but that's true, Jim. Shutting them down after we had to kick to them to start the second half was very important in this ball game. And gave you field position, too. Right. So we get the ball back here and after them, and um, uh, Jim hits Paul Jokic over the middle on the in route, and uh, we're on the move again. Things happen in the game. The second half started yeah. turnovers a little you know, bit. This is a great play. Um, uh, Jim was under heat here and got the ball out to Bob Perriman uh, on a, a bootleg play. And uh, so that was uh, an exceptional play, in my opinion. Yeah, you're talking Jim. about power running. How about Perriman? Yeah, Perriman took on a few guys here and really came out the other end. That's, <laughs> that's the way you like to see a fullback run, isn't it? That's the old Michigan fullback, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, so. You know, we're feeling pretty confident, except uh, we keep stopping ourselves. The uh, penalties are one thing or another, and we had to settle for a field goal, and so we go up 17-3. to 17-3 is good, though, because, again, they had the ball to start, and, and you didn't get any, let them get anything. Then you got three to take that right. lead to 14. Right. That's exactly what happened. Here's a third down 10 on the next possession. Uh, Jim throws deep down here and uh, it's tipped and intercepted and this was our first interception of the year jim and uh, i wish we hadn't had it <laughs> but again the defense they came up with the big play and they quieted the crowd because the crowd was excited after oh, this yeah. interception this, uh, this crowd can be something down here uh, this is a big play in here billy harris hits him and and uh, we recover the fumble and now we got field position at the 30 yard line and leading 17 to 3, so um, we're feeling pretty good right now. Again, did, would you like to have a little bigger lead at this point because the defense sure. was playing so well? Yeah, we sure would. Here's an option play, and J. 
Jim pitches it out to Jamie. Jamie runs for a first down inside the 20-yard line. And you look at Jamie Morris and Thomas Wilcher. They're little backs, but boy, do they that's right, powerful that's right. little guys. They're not bad. We get down in there, and unfortunately, uh, Jamie uh, drops the ball. Now, Jamie said the whistle blew, but, <laughs> but that's uh, I didn't hear any whistle. <laughs> and this is silent film here, so uh, we'll have to take that as a fumble. Here, uh, uh, their quarterback is under pressure again. He throws the ball, and Mike Kammerstein intercepts for us. It was uh, really a sack back here that helped us there. Uh, Again, the and, defense, the big play. Brought the ball back to us. Now, this time, we got to get in there and do something. You know, you make sure this happens this time. You're not going to be fooling around with three points. Here's a fourth down two situation. We disdain the field goal and uh, go for the play, and uh, Jim picks up the first down. Option play, good play to call in short yardage situations. Right. It's still a good football play almost any time you call it, as long as it can be run right. Here, uh, Jim uh, fakes the sweep and was going to throw, and comes out and scrambles and gets some yardage. I think we're trying to come back from a penalty here again, Jim, uh, where they set us back some. And Second straight week, Jim Harbaugh's played right. a good, solid game, too. This um, field goal here uh, puts us up 20-3, uh, to three, and uh, the penalties there, Jim, put us back so that we, you know, we couldn't score a touchdown. We had to go for a field goal again. Defensively, uh, yeah, this little this little guy. Uh, Here's the tackling look at you're this talking guy. about. He's scrambling around here, you know. He he's a dangerous little guy, and uh, <laughs> and really was their leading ground gainer on this uh, scrambling. But he's very very good at it and dangerous. Third down and nine. Uh, hit him right here and didn't wrap him up, and here he comes again. But even with the scrambling, it really, you took their two big backs, Dendy and Haygood, right out of the right. game. Right, they, uh, they didn't hurt us at all. Uh, Hold is the only guy that really hurt us in there, and it was all on these scrambling plays. Here he did a great job on the option, got the ball out, and uh, they get good yardage close to a first down. Uh, they'll pick up that first down and continue their drive and get down in there where, you know, they've got a chance to score. Fourth and goal to Fourth five. Fourth and goal, they decided to go with this. They had scored a year ago on a play like this, uh, diving up in there when people were expecting the pass. This time, we held them a yard short. And that, I think, was the turning point in the game, really, because right. it was still not out of reach yet. And no, I think not they, at all. They just not sagged after right. this. Right. But, uh, you know, they're still hitting hard and coming after us, but uh, this drive, we go 99 yards, and. Here's a third down and one. Jim keeps it on the option, gets a big play um, to get us almost to midfield. And now we're uh, in a position where we're in control. It's 20 to three, we're moving the ball. Uh, we decide to stay on the ground. We're sweeping, running off tackle, using the fullback on the buck. And that's about all we were doing and uh, just keeping the ball moving. And this is where Clay Miller was talking about. We just kept leaning on him, and they yeah, were we just, smaller. We just and... kept after him here. Tom Wilshire breaks out here. I thought he's going all the way. You can see his speed here. Uh, this fellow had an angle on him, finally got him down six, seven yards. Look, he wanted to get me in there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, his biggest game of his career. Right. He got over 100 yards, and uh, Tom's going to be a key factor in, uh, in our season, I can tell you that. Option play, uh, pitch to Gerald White, who runs hard and goes in there to score. We go up 27 to 3. Get an interception from one of the Schulte brothers. Ball comes back to you. Right. We got field position again, and now um, uh, Ernie, Holloway. Ernie Holloway gets into the game. Ernie's been bothered by a sore leg, and unfortunately, after his second run, uh, he banged it up again, and we had to take him out. Chris Zerbrug's in a quarterback now and does a good job taking him down there to score. Uh, he hits Pinky Higgins over the middle here for a, a good game uh, on a third and long situation that we had to have. Comes back to Wilshire. Wilshire runs right up in there and scores, and uh, that closes out the scoring at uh, 34 to 3. Do you realize that at 34 and 3, you're 2 and 0 in 1985, and you haven't been 2 and 0 since 1978? Jim, really, don't remind me of this. <laughs> you all mean, the bad things. I mean, that's not bad. I thought that was pretty good. That's one of those statistics I stored yeah, up for yeah, you. Good. See if it would well, be a surprise. Uh, you know, we did talk about this because we've won some big games in the last five years, either in the opener or the second game, and always lost the next one. And we said, now this time we got to go down there and win the second game, and uh, and then we're going to be uh, in good shape. Back again. Uh, while we were watching the game, a lot of people talked about the officiating, said maybe Michigan got homered a little bit down there. Your reaction? Well, we, we figured we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't get many breaks in that regard going down there. They had all of their uh, 
southern independent officials and and uh, we didn't get any <laughs> to say that you're not going to say you it, got it had been a shame it would have been a shame if we lost the game you know but um you know, you got to just forget about that. Let's put it this way. Chances of our getting Southern independent officials again are not very good. <laughs> okay. One of the things that I talked to Coach Moeller about after the game, mentally to get the kids ready to play the next game because you've come up with two big victories against two very highly rated opponents. And he says, we can't forget what it took to get where we are. It's right. hard work. We were underdogs right. both times, That's but right. let's not get overconfident. Yeah, Jim, in our Wednesday practice, we, we felt we had to have a tough practice. We hit the field at 3.30. We didn't get off till 6.25. Now, I don't like to do that. That's a lot of hard work. But when we came off the field, uh, I told the coaches, I said, we're going to be ready for South Carolina because uh, we never heard uh, a single guy say a word. They just kept pumping it out and working and, you know, made us feel real good. Well, uh, they certainly <laughs> were ready for South Carolina. No question about that. Will they be ready for Maryland? We'll find out next Saturday. In the meantime, stay with us for the scouting report of the team.